Kia ora koutou. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 52 of Only a Podcast. Say hello, Captain. Hello, Captain. Hello, Captain. Hello, Captain. Hello, Captain. How's everybody going? It's horrible, miserably rainy, kind of dreek. Dreek. As the Scots say. As they Great say, Great day here. Yeah. And it looks to be the same down where you are. Yeah, it's great. Watching and miserable. The cricket. They're playing cricket. Yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah, cricket is down knows. here. Yeah. Yeah, it's. Um, uh. Uh, secretly quite loving it because it's like Christmas weather. <laughs> it's supposed to be the start yeah. of summer, but um, yeah, it feels it's beginning to feel a lot like Christmas down here. It's bloody freezing. <laughs> but, uh, like a proper, proper Christmas, isn't it? It is. Cold. It is. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, there we go. Enough about mm. enough about all that. So, about that. what what we got today? I've uh, got loads of things. Well, I have. You have. I haven't. But I right. don't know why. I don't know why we seem to be getting stuck into culture this week um, in a good. big way. Um, so there's uh, ooh, there's uh, a couple of uh, series scissors, and a gig, and uh, uh, and an album, and uh, and uh, and, uh, and what else? Oh, and, and some celebrities passing away, um, yeah, yeah, amongst that. other things. I don't hmm. know. Her. We do what we do. All the stuff you need, yeah. And a lot of stuff you don't. That's right. That's right. Yeah. It's stuff you do need. Um, uh, we're trawling the streaming services this week. Um, I've been watching quite a bit. I don't, I don't know. It's, uh, it just seems to be that time, you know. Mm. So it gets to Christmas and you start thinking, well, it's holidays and I should be taking it easy. And <laughs> I don't really take it as easy all, all year. But... Uh, uh, we were delighted to see the return of Slow Horses. Uh, yes. uh, just great. Uh, just great. Uh, and I think they've all settled into their characters solidly now. Um, mm. And it's... Uh, I've watched the first two episodes um, of said spy series with a comedy touch. And um, it's it's just great. Uh, and Gary Oldman seems to have um, developed one of the most odious... Uh, yet uh, fearsome um, characters in uh, in spy series of all time um, in Jackson Lamb. It's just amazing stuff how he could be so awful and yet so watchable. Um, it's yeah, been good. I, I only watched the first series. I uh, yeah, I need to get into that again. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they're all there. Mm. Um, I, I'm a huge devotee of the books, as we have said, mm. uh, and um, yeah, it's um, it's a must watch for me. On Apple TV, it is. That rhymes. Uh, That's a good line. It's a much watch for me on Apple TV. Brilliant. Um, yeah. And the other thing, which is kind of a bit weird, is just um, you, you find yourself, like, what should I watch now? Who, who knows? Um, I've got a bit of time before bed mm. and that kind of stuff. So I flipped onto um, a martial arts animated series on Netflix. Okay, I wasn't expecting eyes. that. <laughs> oh, there you go. Um, I mean, I, you know, I'm so quite a big fan of uh, martial arts films, yeah. but uh, not not obsessed with them. Mm. So I just thought, well, okay, who knows? Um, let's have a look. Um, Blue Eye Samurai, and I read... Uh, You've talked about this before, haven't you? Vaguely sort of read some reviews, and I've now I've done it. I've done the whole thing, innit? Right, okay. Um, I, I don't think I have talked about it before. Maybe uh. It's just another one. Um, but, um, yeah, this is an animated series. Uh, it's set in 17th century Japan. Um, and that shogunate have closed all the borders and kicked out all the foreigners because that's what they like. Fair uh, enough. But there are one or two still left illegally in Japan. And the story is that a half-white, half-Japanese Swordmaster called Miju um, uh, desires vengeance um, in these they foreigners. Often, they often do, um, don't they? They often do. It drives the whole program. Let me say, <laughs> let me say, vengeance is exacted uh, to a large degree, right? Uh, on, on innocent bystanders, uh, soldiers, and uh, said foreigners alike. Yeah. Um, as the as the um, as the samurai goes about. Um, his slash her business. Um, mm. There's a little bit of a twist there, folks, uh, which you may notice. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's, it's, it's the sort of ravishing looking uh, animation, you know. It's, uh, it's not quite um, 
Studio Ghibli standard, but um, it's certainly very nice. Uh, they make great play of snow. <laughs> you can tell the animators are very proud of, <laughs> proud of what they've done when they put <laughs> snowstorms in it. Yeah. Ooh, look at that, isn't look it great? That, yeah. And it is, it is great, it's, it's mm. very good. Um, it is R-rated, which is, I think, well, I think it's R-rated. Certainly got some sex in it, which is quite weird mm. uh, in places, uh, occasionally funny, uh, mm. intentionally funny. Mm. Um, so if that puts you off, hmm, yeah, I guess it might. Uh, but uh, it, it's all part. It's all part of the plot. And um, if it's if, if you're into um, uh, martial arts stuff, um, it it does have a genuinely intriguing kind of plot mixed in with all the blood, violence, sword play, yeah. death, um, cavalry charges. You know, they're all there. They're all there. Uh, uh, fighting against um fantastic odds to win the day mm. um but i quite enjoyed it it was uh it was a bit of a surprise okay blue eyes so Net samurai Net netflix one blue eyes samurai um my other skin is the the voice of the sword master uh the heavyweights uh voicing behind the scenes uh george takei from star trek yep. and yep. uh kenneth branner ah. doing one of the foreigners um, right. So yeah, I'll leave it at that. Okay. So those so are my like kind of two, different, didn't it? two watchy things on streaming. Yeah. yeah. Good. I don't think I've watched anything this last week since we last spoke. Oh. No, I have, but mm. nothing to talk about. Nothing special. Um, mm. Yeah, but um, I've been okay. uh, as we all have. We've had our Spotify Wrapped delivered. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm never sure about it. <laughs> just, I'm not sure. What, whether it's, whether whether it's, it's true. A, whether it's accurate. Yeah, I mean, okay, I knew who my... I, I'll, I'll read out, so um, just briefly. So okay. I listened to 45 genres. Who knew there were 45 yeah. genres? Um, my top genre was jazz, because I spent quite nice. a big chunk... Okay. Great, yeah, yeah. I spent a big chunk of earlier in the year sort of studying jazz guitar quite a bit, so hence listening to a lot of it. Um, mm. but I listen. I listen to, I listen to one thousand and thirty-five artists. I mean, imagine okay. that if you had to go out and buy a okay. thousand and thirty-five records in the old wow. days, it just wouldn't have happened, would it? Um, no. Yeah. So I listened to a thousand and thirty-five different artists. My top artist, and I knew this was going to be the case, was the Lottery Winners. Um, I've yeah. gone on, on and on about this album. I just think it's a fantastic album. I think it's a brilliant album. Yeah. Um, anxiety replacement therapy. Um, so that was that. They were my top artist. Uh, followed by Wes Montgomery, uh, jazz guitar legend. Uh, wouldn't surprise anyone. And then a couple of favourites at three and four, Roddy Frame and uh, uh, Arctic Monkeys. Uh, yeah, they're, they're never far from my eardrums. Yeah. And then number five, like I say, I'm not sure about this. <laughs> number five was Paul Simon. Mm. Now I'm just, I don't so know. I mean, did I, I, listen, I did listen I mean, did to you? Paul Simon. I've listened to a few of his, I went back, like I think you did with Elton John recently. I went back to some of his earlier albums just to, yeah, just because. So I did listen to a couple of his earlier albums once or twice, but you know, I was listening to a lot of you know, people like Miles Davis and stuff like that. Mm. Um, so I don't know how Paul Simon snuck into the top five, right? Um, yeah, artists that is. But my top five songs were quite interesting. So the top four were all from that Lottery Winners album, right? Right. So Worry, Long Way Fair Down, enough. Money, and Burning House. So I listened to that album a lot. So that made my top. Five four of my top five songs the number yeah. five was um i'll see you in my dreams by django reinhardt okay again i, <laughs> I would have listened to no, that maybe yeah. but i i was studying that much? You know, yeah i mean i was the two jazz standards i really studied they were autumn leaves and blue bossa i studied them in yeah. quite quite in depth earlier in the year and i was listening to as many different versions as i could ah maybe there's the answer I was listening to as many different versions, different versions. as I could. Mm. Um, because obviously jazz standards get covered by hundreds of different artists. But um, mm. yeah, I mean, I was listening to those a lot. Um, but yeah, somehow Django Reinhardt made the top, so good on you, Django, for making the top five. Probably didn't make many people's top fives. No. Um, so that's pretty good. And my listening tastes were most closely aligned with um, Barclay in, in California, in the USA. People in Barclay, USA, have similar taste to me apparently which is yeah it's, I, I, so i'm convinced that some of these things um are just in des uh, designed to get clicks or to yeah 
Maybe. The socials and people put mm. on the thing. What on earth? It's crank wave. Good lord! I've been listening <laughs> to that quite a lot, and nobody knows what it is exactly um, because they've just made it up. Just made it up. Um, yeah. uh, I, I don't know. But I, I, for the same reason, I don't know whether they just drop things into your, into your, you know, subvert things into your playlist mm. just to sort of um, get you to comment about it. I, I yeah. Mine was. I, that said, uh, my list was um, well, kind of what I thought and hoped it would be because mm. there's generally the odd surprise is the thing you've forgotten like the status quo will pop up or something like that yeah, and that yeah, track yeah. you played 14 yeah. million times yeah. but no I didn't have any of that stuff and it genuinely was um, Young Fathers Everything But The Girl mm. uh, Lilac like Time Hamish Hawk albums that I have played yeah. over and over again and yeah. there they were and that was fine mm. uh, so I'm not complaining I guess we mm. could complain about Spotify in general um, we might leave that for another day. About That's a whole day. different story, yeah, yeah. But but it's good. I I'll think my um, you get your playlist, you know, your uh, 2023 playlist out of, out of it. And it's actually a really good playlist I've got there because I've got all like I say, lots and lots of jazz, but also you know all the Mercury Prize albums that we looked at uh, yeah. a few months back. So they're all in there because there was some great stuff in in there. So it'd be nice, uh, you know. Probably over the Christmas holidays, I'll uh, just put that out uh, sound. Um, playlist on in the background playing away yeah um, yeah but Good yeah stuff. it's all right it's interesting i suppose something Why to talk it's... about yeah yeah well yeah in some places especially mm. if you've been listening to crank wave crank wave um, <laughs> you will be talking about it a fair bit i imagine that's trying to that... find out what that actually is well that'll be um, ai and algorithms right it'll be analyzing the music for certain yeah. things and making up a title for it yeah crank wave Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Oh, well. Anyway. Yeah. We shall see. Mm. Um, yeah. Uh, I'll quickly squeeze in the other thing I watched um, or finished off again. I'm not mentioned before on this program is a uh, New Zealand <coughs> serial um, called After the Party. Uh, it basically stars top New Zealand actor Robin Malcolm. Mm. Outrageous Fortune, Far North, and a much New Zealand TV. Uh, and it's I think it's a sort of joint production with ITV. So you've got Peter Mullen, mm. who is one of those Scottish character actors who you will recognise from lots of mm. things. He's been in Ken Loach thing. He's been in Shallow Grave and Train Spotting and Braveheart and all that stuff. And um, it's a good drama. It's basic, good, fantastic acting. It's basically about the mental disintegration of the character Robin Malcolm plays when uh, there's a horrendous drunk party at uh, her house about five years ago and her husband is caught by her looking after um, one of the drunken teens. Or is he? Is he, in fact, um, not exactly looking after them but doing uh, mm. bad things to them? Yeah. And um, it's about how she uh takes the bad things angle and um now it's kind of messes with her head and destroys her life um i'm yet to see the final episode which is uh today i think um so we'll see what happens in the end but um uh, top acting all round, and it's set in wellington so lots of um wellington scenes that you will see and uh yeah all around good stuff uh it's on tv and said it's on streaming TVNZ Plus, with the, as I said, with the last one withheld until tonight. And uh, so that's free. And it's. Um, it's yeah, a good I see the, the trailers. Drama. The trailers pop up all the time for that. And every time they do, we, we say, must watch that. That looks good. Must watch yeah. that. But uh, we haven't yet. But yeah. Think I'd be in, a, be in the right mood. It's not, a, not exactly yeah, the pretty, lightest. Yeah, it looks pretty matter. heavy. Yeah, um, it, it, it places its uh, uh, some parts of, of of the things that she does because of the things mm. uh, the, the the people she's up, she upsets or, or the, uh, are mildly comedic in some of the things she does, but mm. um, but mostly serious subjects. So yeah, mm. um, it's good to watch. I, 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 um, like other things we've mentioned recently, um, is it been it's been sort of touted as um, the best thing possibly that Robin Malkin has ever done and ever been right, in and, okay. ever starred, and the best acting she's ever done too. So, right. um, yeah. Worth I'd a look. probably go along with that. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yes, okay. Indeed. Yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. Um, mm. We just recently had, uh, we, uh, we recently lost Shane McGowan. In fact, it was one of those days where we, we lost, I think, four famous people on the same day. Um, mm. Some more famous than others. But um, I don't know if you, uh, I, I could never really describe myself as a fan of the Pogues, not, okay, as knowing much about the Pogues. Okay. Um, I do remember kind of around about 87, uh, I had some friends that were totally into the Pogues. They were from an Irish background and they were totally into the Pogues. It never really got me. Um, mm. Obviously since uh, I've, I've realized, um, yeah, what a genius he was, what a songwriter and what a life, you know. And it's poetry, man. Yeah, yeah poetry. It, yeah, so um, I, I noticed you posted a few things on the socials around it. Um, yeah. Yeah, a tragic loss, really, but not surprising, of course. I mean, he basically drank no. himself to death. Uh, Ultimate hedonist. Um, yeah. Terrible, terrible drugs angle. There was a huge yeah. black hole. Um, I saw them in 1988, and reading some of the things I've read about that particular year, uh, problematic tours were just starting to begin where they mm. had to get spider Stacy to sing mm, um, yeah. because he was just out of it completely um mm. and um on his way to an early grave um he still went to an early grave but lasted a lot longer than a lot of people thought he would mm. and maybe saved maybe saved by victoria mary clark his partner who yeah straightened him out enough i think yeah. um but um no some of those lyrics are just are just tremendous all right yes, are we going to hear we're we going to hear it because it's christmas we're we going to hear those some of those lyrics again obviously um i oh, was a fan i was a huge, that, i was a fan i've yeah. just heard i've just heard they've um there's gonna be or they've just come out a, a new box set uh, around kirsty mccall um oh, excellent I don't know don't know what i heard mm. there's a new album like i'm i've released material a new kirsty mccall album uh, um, right. but i, I heard okay. um jude rogers you know jude rogers yeah. Um, she, being interviewed because she she put the thing together. I, I'm, I'm not giving very much information here because I wasn't paying too much attention. But there's a new thing around Kirsty McColl. There's definitely a new album. And mm. um, uh, Jude Rogers was involved. And it was an interview on Word in Your Ear podcast. So go find that if you're interested in Kirsty McColl. But um, I, that sent me back to listening to some Kirsty McColl stuff a couple of weeks ago. And very underrated and very uh, not as successful as she should have been, I think, Kirsty McColl. She had a few hits with cover versions. Yeah. But um, what, a, what a songwriter she was. You know that song, uh, England to Columbia, Neil? Yeah, You know yeah, that yeah. song? Yep. I mean, the lyrics yeah. to that song, bloody hell. Um, so, yeah, Kirsty McColl and, and of in, course, Shane. Yeah, in part, I think, due to her personality, I don't think she was very confident live no. on stage uh, and had to be sort of, cajoled into it a lot of the mm. time um but uh, certainly two terrific albums that i can remember right now are mm. kite yep. and electric landlady which yeah. is brilliant brilliant title record. yeah awesome um uh, anyone could just go just go listen to those two to, for a start yeah um and you get where she's coming from and people um, queuing up to work with her right she worked with billy bragg and johnny Marr and all kinds of people um yep. just um yeah, one and I th whenever you hear anyone in the business talking about her, she's just universally adored by everybody. You know, I think she was yeah. like the nicest person in the world. Um, that was a tragic end as well, wasn't it? But um, yeah. So oh, yeah. speaking of tragic ends, so okay, yeah, keep it yes. light. Keep it light. Well, so, death. Um, yeah, death. Papa death. So do you remember twenty sixteen when all them people died? Everyone died in twenty sixteen, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah. I don't Famous. think this year has been too far behind. Um, I've been scouring through it uh, just before mm. this, and I, I've I've written a few down. This is just a selection of the uh, so, well, I hate the okay. celebrities. Celebrities that died. I'm going to run through this list. Check this out: Shane McGowan, Tina Turner, Matthew Perry, Michael Gambon, John Motson, Bobby Charlton, Terry Venables, Trevor Francis, Gianluca Vialli, Dicky Davis, Martin Amis. Oh. Rhymes. Andy Rock, Annabelle Giles, David McCallum, Tony Bennett, Michael Parkinson, Robbie Robertson, Sinead O'Connor, Harry Belafonte, Glenda Jackson, Barry Humphreys, Paul O'Grady, Jerry Springer, Raquel Welch, Burt Bacharach, Tom Verlaine, David Crosby, Lisa Marie Presby, Presley, Jeff Beck, Alan Rankin. 
That's about a quarter of the list I looked up. Unbelievable. Yeah. That's that's yeah, a big that's year. So, yeah. So, but is it does it feel do you think it feels like that or it is genuinely big? I mean, do we have fallow years when... when... <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I You'd just, have to compare I just don't... it. I, I don't have a spreadsheet like or anything, but... Um... Do we just get to hear about it more these days and it all feels terrible? Just, or feels, is there a sort like of an little... age thing in that in that these people are... There are maybe a lot of them are kind of 20, 25 years older than us are getting to the age where... Yeah, yeah there, there is you know? that, but there's a lot of young ones as well. Well, it's true. Uh, by young i mean sort of under 70 really i would say um yeah. you know uh, my, point, my point evaporates basically yeah i yeah, yeah i don't i don't know yeah i don't know it would be interesting yeah. to sort of try and find a fallow year when not many people mm. pass away who you respect and like and mm. have watched or listened to for a long time yeah, yeah i don't know so lots and lots and lots but of yeah that's a hell of a list that's yeah. a hell of a list. I mean, we yeah. were talking, you know, back to the sort of Prince David Bowie kind of year. Mm. Um, any, any of that? Oh, well, yeah, maybe this is, maybe this is the year. Mm. Yeah. Although I have to say, Henry Kissinger, see you, mate. Thank oh, you. yeah. Yeah, he had a good innings. Don't mind that one. Mm. Anyway, that's probably cruel to say that. No, it's mm. not. Okay. Let's move Alistair on, Darling we? as well. Oh, uh, that was on the nice same day, brave. wasn't it? Yeah, probably a bit too nice. Probably a bit too nice to be too nice for, for politics. Yeah, too nice for politics. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Speaking of politics, I think we've both been enjoying. You, you, you messaged me last night to say, "Oh, you should watch." Have I got news for you? And <laughs> I was watching it. <laughs> you were watching it. I was we watching, it at, watching it at, we're both at, the, watching same it at the same time. At the same time, there's yeah. that synergy. But um, yeah, I've been really enjoying that series. Um, I've been watching them all. This this series, uh, getting back into it. I haven't watched it for a long time, but yeah, it never uh, never lets you down, does it? No. Well, um, British politics, it's just all there, isn't it? You don't, yeah. you know, the materials are there. Yeah, the program. Uh, I guess it sort of stands or falls by some of the guests that are on, and it just mm. so happened that last night um, with Gus Khan, um, mm. new British comedian, doing the uh, do the comparing. But the the chaotic uh, and hilarious Ross Noble. Um, yeah. I, I don't like the word hilarious, but um, boy, that man goes off on some oh, tangents. Surrealism, it's it's, it's surrealism. I love genuinely it. Genuinely funny. Yeah. And of course, that set Paul Merton off yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, so you know they were they were bouncing off each other too. Yeah. So uh, if if you can find it, folks, and it, it is illegally put on YouTube. Maybe I shouldn't mention that, but the recent uh, Have I Got News For You with Gus Khan, especially in the second half, mm. absolutely kicks off and is very funny indeed. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah. The other one of those I, shows, I, one of those shows that, uh, that just keeps rolling. Was it 65 series or something oh, like something that? Something like that. It's been going since, God, the late 80s, would it be? Early 90s? Oh, Angus yeah, Datum, yeah. wasn't it, to start with? Yeah, yeah. Long yeah. time ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I also watch on a Saturday night, I catch up with the UK's Friday TV and uh, I always watch Gogglebox. I don't know if you ever watch Gogglebox, have you? Um, no, nah, not really. Ah, oh, it's funny. I know the concept. I know yeah, the concept. it's very, very good. Um, I don't think that programme could ever be made in this country. I don't think it would work. I don't think Kiwis are the right sort of people for that. Um, I don't think they have mm. to. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it would. I don't know. Yeah, Maybe they tried. I don't know. But, um, mm. Yeah, it's good. Always entertaining, Gogglebox. Mm. Um, right, I've done all on my list. It was a sh pretty short list anyway, talking about dead people and my music. Okay. <laughs> couple yeah. Of, uh, yeah, a couple of musical things to, for me to finish off with. Uh, one is um, the new album from Peter Gabriel. And uh, I yeah. will put a link up so you can read some of the backstory for it. But basically, he's been making this album uh, since his previous album of all new material which was up i think in 1995 so he's just carried on working but he hasn't really released mm. it um he's done collaborations and he's done live albums and he's done compilations and all that kind of thing and uh, but this is uh this is the first full album it, it comes rather distractingly in three mixes <sighs> the same album mixed three times so you can right. buy it as a double to get two of them and you can buy the extra special one to get the third one um and people are like oh how can you do this oh my god what am i how am i going to decide which one i like best and my answer would be well 
just listen to it and pick one like I did. And I like the bright mix, as it's mm. called, mm. which is a slightly poppier one. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with the other ones. Um, but um, to me, the bright mix album uh, of I.O., which is what the album is called, um, sounds more like him to me, to my ears than the others do. Um, his voice is in great shape, although I can't exactly tell whether, you know, how, <laughs> when this, when these vocal tracks were laid down, if he's been doing it for the last 30 odd years. Yeah, exactly. Or yeah. whatever. Who knows? Um, but it's, it's, I thought, I'll oh, just give it a listen, you know? Mm, yeah. And it's, it's, it's worth more than that, folks. Um, it's, it's, um, it's, it's not a just give it a listen album. It's, it's the proper Peter Gabriel album of worth and quality. So, um, I would say if you're on streaming services where that is, pick it up. Um, it'll be a hefty fee to buy, I would imagine, mm. being as how it's a triple or a double. Um, but hey, uh, it's great. You've been uh, to speaking. Red and Blue oh, albums are pretty hefty, aren't they? Well, you were telling yes, me the they're price about 150 of bucks, I think, because they're oh. triple albums too. Uh, and you can get the coloured ones if you want. Um, I haven't had a report from my mate Jeff on the mixes because they do have some ones that have been specifically mm. remixed for it. Um, but um, he generally likes the old mixes anyway. So yeah, I think I know yeah. what he's going to say. Yeah. Um, but it's all there and they're all squeaky clean and they're probably very nice. But mm. uh, at, at, at sort of 300 and something dollars for the set plus the single, um, they can uh, stay on the shelf as far as I'm concerned. Because yeah. <sighs> I've got the Beatles albums that I want to get. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, mm. Um, and and finally, and finally, for me, also, uh, musical legends came to town. Um, flew in um, from Wellington. I think <laughs> they performed in Wellington before they came to Auckland. Uh, Kraftwerk were here. Brilliant. And I thought I would have to go and see that. Yeah. Uh, it's it's strange. You come up with lots of questions. Like it. Uh, the significant proportion of it is pre-programmed because the light show and the, the video mm. on the wall all synced, does what yeah. it does mm. and they do their stuff and all that kind of thing. How much do they do? Um, well, they do something because they're the man machine, you know, the mensch machine, that four of them are, are doing it. Just how mm. much they do whilst it's going on, you don't really know. Except perhaps in the last uh, part of the set where they do some stuff from the, a recent album called Techno Pop where they get solos, ha ha. Gotcha. Um, <laughs> so, um, mm. and, then they, and then one by one on the last song, um, they each sort of do a little bit of a solo and then they walk off mm. uh, one by one. And then left at the end is Ralph Futter, who is 77 and the last remaining original craft work in, or whatever mm. you want to call it, mm. um, who also leaves to a complete standing ovation being a Sammy's musical legend and um, and all that. And um, it's a bit like, or it was a bit like a rave in a library, I have to say, because <laughs> everybody everybody was into it and everybody tapping and nodding. Yeah. But there wasn't, I don't know, it may have been different elsewhere, but there wasn't much getting up and dancing going on. Mm. It was an all-seated kind of half arena style mm. show. But there was room for people to go to the edges and bop up and down if they wanted to, but there wasn't too much of that going on. So, mm. um, but I guess... Um, it's got a, it's a bit more like a sort of electronic classical concert, which is entirely right, given that, you know, mm. the original guys were guys that grew up in Germany without referring to or listening to or, or being influenced by Elvis, for example, yeah, rock and roll. Yeah. They, they were the, these were the guys who didn't, uh, you know, but had a great interest in developing electronics and technology and making music with said things 1969 yeah, yeah and it's it's um it's unique right i don't think it's any well there have been things like that since but it's groundbreaking and you talk about how much do they actually play it doesn't really matter does it they created it and they're just delivering it they're presenting yeah. it i don't have to be playing it live as such because it, it will be I mean, impossible sort of, i imagine yeah i mean some of you know, some of ralph's ralph synthesizer lines specifically I, I, I on the solo bit did at the end you just think oh so that sounds like Georgia Baroda. That sounds like Donna Summer. Yeah. You know, you, you knew where these bits were coming from because yeah. they were coming from him. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, 
we could, yeah, like we say, Human League and all those, uh, mm. and all those guys, um, Cabaret Voltaire, yeah. you know, all, yeah. the, all the sort of post punk synthesizer chaps. Yeah. Um, this is where it all comes from. You know, they, uh, Kraftwerk have been going for, I don't know, 10 years or more by yeah, that time. Before they even start. Um, yeah, it's um, yeah, Thomas Dolby and all that lot. And I always oh, dismissed yeah. all that stuff but uh i've revisited it a bit actually over the last mm. year or two because i never really gave it much much time at the yeah. time in the 80s but yeah people and you, you find youtube clips of people like thomas dolby being interviewed about music and god they were especially thomas dolby he, he really knew his stuff He because really, you had to know your stuff in them days he didn't yeah, plug yeah. it into a laptop and uh launch no. a plug in and it did it you had to plug wires into things you know yeah so, uh, yeah yeah yeah. So we, so it first came, you know, to my attention in 1974. So I don't know quite whether you were listening no. to music by that stage. Uh, probably. Uh, <laughs> so I was. Basically, but I was possibly. I was 14. Uh, I was five, and I, as I as I looked up, um, Autobahn got to number 11 in the UK, uh, and it was like something from. Planet Tharg from his space. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So long. It's, it's long. Why is this so long? Oh, have you heard the full version? Good Lord. You know, it's, mm. it's just an astonishing thing. Um, yeah. They were great. They were, they were, they were what I wanted them to be, as it were. Yeah. You know, yeah. They, good, good stuff. I can't imagine I will ever see them again. I mean, Ralph is, unless they just do the craft work show, mm. they could do it. Four guys in the suits go on to stand at four lecterns. Uh, and do the yeah. do the light show thing. You could mm. do the craft work show for years and years and years. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, good stuff. Yeah, great really stuff. stuff. Didn't get your Coldplay tickets then? I didn't get my Coldplay tickets. Here we are, folks, with another beef about said tickets. Um, apparently, there was an early release that if you'd been on the various email lists that that, that have been created, you could have got in for a reasonable price. <clears throat> reasonable, ho ho. Mm. But now, right at the moment, we're in one of those little periods where only certain people can get VIP tickets and folks uh, Coldplay tickets vary between 400 which basically allows you into the stadium early that's about pretty much all that so, so you can buy does. more drinks and food yeah. buy more drinks and food uh, yeah. you get a bit of you make it a lanyard or something like that oh, to go yeah. in with special yeah. lanyard um, and you get nearer the stage as a result mm. um, and the top ticket is $1,250 mm for your all seeing or doing VIP, I don't know, buffet lunch beforehand or whatever the <laughs> hell it is, I really don't know. But there you go. Yeah. yeah. 1250 bucks. Um, you could have a, you could almost have a holiday in the islands, but mm. no, maybe not quite, but you know, and the problem is people will go, you got, yeah, they will, it will sell out. Of course it will. Three nights folks at Eden yeah. Park. Yeah. 55,000 people times three if yep. they fill it if they fill it all so yeah, they people will. obviously they do want to go and yeah. will pay that much yeah. um yeah not for me thanks no because you, you have to spend all that money then you've got to sit and li listen then to you've got to listen to Coldplay <laughs> it's the bloody Coldplay for two and a half hours you're all right you got... <laughs> uh, right let's let's bah, uh, humbug I just I yeah. forgot to mention earlier. Um, I I did a little post uh, on our socials earlier. I don't know if you've seen it. A couple of oh, hours yeah, no. ago, I did a post of every year. I don't know who the artist is, but someone creates a, a, like a Sergeant Pepper's album cover uh, of all oh, yeah, the, I did all see the that. people that have died that year. You know all the famous oh, deaths. Um, it's it's well really done. well done, and it seems to happen every year. I don't know who who it is that creates it, but I, I shared that because. Uh, because because so have a look at that and if you're not following not? on our socials why not what's wrong why with not? you Buggers. only a yeah. podcast on uh, threads and instagram and facebook and uh Indeed. there is a twitter x thing but we don't do that anymore so don't no. bother looking there you won't find anything don't much. go there and if you yeah. want to give us an early christmas present then yep. just share it with somebody else and yeah uh, hopefully somebody that. else can um, that. can latch on yep um, I have got one more thing. Yeah. It's just T-shirt of T-shirt of the week. It's oh, alien, alien weaponry. Weapon, it's alien nice. weaponry. Uh, Maori death metal band. Yeah. T-shirt. So that's this week's. T Regular listeners will know who that is. Yeah. 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 Um, all right. I think uh, probably our next episode will be our last one of the year. 
I think, think it will. With our best yeah. of best of the year. Yeah. Although I've, I've blown that a little bit with Miss Spotify wrapped, but um anyway, uh yeah. We'll, yeah, best of best of things, best, best of, of best of stuff. TV, TV, film, book, doco, yeah, all that music, all that stuff. Sandwich. Uh, sandwich. Yeah, why not? Better, yeah. better make one. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So um, cool. All right, well, say goodbye, Captain. Take away, Captain. See you later, folks. Right here, right.